Hey guys, I'm back. My name is Michael Cherokee and I am your preventive specialist. I, uh, as a preventive specialist, just so you get an idea if this is your first time tuning in, a preventive specialist, I'm basically a health and fitness expert. I just take it a little bit of a step further with the more education and, and in a more detailed sense of how to approach a healthy and fit lifestyle. This is something that we don't learn in schools. It's not something that we're taught in higher education facilities. This is things that most people believe that you're supposed to do your own research on, which you can, and which is available out there. But I just kind of want to give you the, you know, just, just pure, simple knowledge, something that we should be taught at an early age as children, and something that we should be able to take into the rest of our lives. However, last time I spoke, I was uh, talking about the seven bad habits that people have when entering into a healthier lifestyle or a weight loss program. Today, I want to actually kind of point out some of the things that people are doing that you know, a, a majority of the people that I see, for example, on a regular basis, I sit down, I perform you know, what you would consider a health assessment, kind of like what a personal trainer does. But again, as a preventive specialist, I not only train clients, but I train trainers how to do their job. I actually help build teams to formulate the best health and fitness approach towards members of gyms. So today, what I've want to share with you is some things that I have learned and, and from people that sit down with me and, and just the consistent patterns and the routines that a majority of the population have and I'll explain what you might be doing that you think is the right way but it's actually not and it's causing your program to fail each and every time. Also shine a little bit more light on what you can do to better it and to actually help guarantee your results each and every time. Just some simple methods. So let's just start with a foundation, something that a lot of people don't you know, think about or that we take for granted, but we actually have to understand how we've evolved. Okay, so let's take for example, uh, when we eat food, okay, everyone just thinks that exercise is the only way to you know, burn calories, but it's not the only way. In fact, it's, it's only a small portion of how we burn calories, you know, our bodies burn calories in so many different ways. But here's some common mistakes that some people make, especially if they think that you know they need to cut back on portions. So sometimes people, okay, well they'll they'll skip breakfast, okay? Okay. When you skip breakfast, immediately it, your metabolism stops. Okay, and I'm not speaking about intermittent fasting because uh, I'm not speaking about intermittent fasting. Intermittent fasting is, uh, is, I have nothing against it, but it does incorporate you do skip and you fast for a certain amount of time. But if you're getting into a, a fitness goal or a healthier lifestyle, I wouldn't advise you to do intermittent fasting right first. You need to get to know your body first. However, the number one reason that your fit program will fail if you skip breakfast or if you're doing that right now, Okay, this is how your metabolism stops. Once the metabolism stops, your body is basically going to say, hey, I'm not going to burn fat. I need that to survive. That is a survival mechanism. Okay, when you skip breakfast, okay, you're also not allowing your body the, the proper amount of nutrients for your brain and your muscles to actually help you get through the day and to have better focus and better performance while you do your day-to-day -day activities. Okay, another common mistake that sometimes people will make, you know, They'll wait till like midday to eat lunch, okay? And when they do, it's probably going to be some kind of takeout, all right? So, takeout. Let's talk about takeout, all right? Makes it like your fast food options for those of you who can, you know, afford more of your uh, upscale restaurants. But there are ways to make a little bit more better suggestions when you go out that rate. But if you're getting takeout, okay, and you're getting that one meal, all right? What you've done is you've gotten a very low nutrient value meal, okay? It's also a very small portion, however, it's got high calories, okay? So the body is going to accept that high caloric intake and it's not necessarily going to burn all of it. What is it going to do? It's going to store it. Once it stores that, it's doing that because it doesn't know when you're going to eat again. You've already skipped breakfast. Okay, so the body's like, oh gosh, what am I doing? But then what happens after you, you eat this meal, okay? You get tired, right? About midday, you're sleepy, you're tired, 
Because, you know, the body does have to go to work, but your involuntary muscles is responsible for breaking food down. That's your intestines and your digestive system. Those are muscles. So I want you to keep that in your mind. Your digestive system is your muscles. These are called involuntary muscles. But if they're under conditioned, okay, then they're not necessarily going to burn these calories, okay? Once these foods get down into here, they'll go to work. But if they're under condition, for example, if you're not feeding your system all day long, it's going to slow down. It's going to start working. So that, there's not a lot of uh, nutrients. There's not a lot of energy that comes from this type of food. So sometimes people, are, maybe they're getting coffee about that midday for that caffeine. Or you're just going to be real sluggish, okay, until, you know, just kind of fighting to get through your day, all right? Uh, another thing that some people will do, you know, about 3 o'clock maybe, in the afternoon or you know right when they get off work they might get something like uh, low low calorie nuts or crackers okay or fruit you know maybe you want to make a healthy suggestion so you get fruit this is a very low caloric intake okay but not to mention so your body is, is already running on empty it's tired so it's gonna burn through that super fast but people think that logically in their brains it's a small portion, it's not going to be a lot, so there's no reason for their bodies to gain weight, but they're hoping that it will help them lose weight. But your body is not, still hasn't taken enough calories throughout the day, so it's not going to burn any fat. And that's what you're trying to get rid of. Instead of burning fat, it's going to store that again, okay? It'll burn through your system, okay? And then you think it might be just enough energy to help you get through the rest of your day, okay, without thinking about it. And then at the end of your day, you know, some people, they, they don't eat until dinner time, okay? Now, most of the populations eat some of their largest meals around dinner time, okay? But then what, what comes after dinner? For a lot of people that I speak to, two things happen. A, most often, they're in a habit to eat again. It might be like cereal, or it might be ice cream, okay? Or it might be popcorn, you know, somebody's trying to think a lighter kind of, you know, substance before you go to bed, okay? But then you're eating, you know, typically the sugar cravings that you're getting after dinner, it's because your body is not eating enough food. So sugar cravings is not like... You know, it's like a type of like addiction or something. It can be, but you have to listen to your body. Generally, sugar cravings later in the day are an indication that you're not eating enough food. So what the body's trying to do is trying to send you a signal, and it could be your taste buds, letting you know that you haven't taken enough calories that day. So it's trying to make up for what you've lacked during the day, that you did not take in enough calories at the end of your day before you go to sleep. Okay? And then, you know, sometimes people do popcorn because it's healthier. Guys, if you're not taking in enough food, your body's not going to allow you to burn the calories. Some of you might say, well, hey, I saw some weight loss when I first started doing this. That's true. The body will sense that. It's because you're under eating. Chances are you may have actually lost more muscle. And that's the last thing that you need in order to stay on a consistent, healthier lifestyle. Then you go to sleep at night, if you can go to sleep. A lot of these people that have been eating this way for long distance, uh, long, long duration, they have trouble sleeping at night. They're waking up constantly in the middle of the night, or they're already overweight, and you know maybe you got too much frontal weight, or you sleep with a CPAP machine. More and more people are sleeping with a CPAP machine, and they've been doing it for months, years. It, it doesn't seem to be a problem in their brain. They just think they have a sleeping problem instead of approaching what actually might be causing the problem. Stress is not necessarily just outside issues. You know, work stress, family stress, you know, my friend made me mad stress, some money stress. That's not the only kind of stress there is. Stress is also internal. Stress internally in the body basically will cause you to go in depression mode. It's under eating, irritable sleep patterns at nighttime. It'll cause you to wake up frequently. Some people are even up for an hour or two, you know, or they might be eating in the middle of the night and they think that that's a bad thing, but they're starving. So it's not a bad thing. It's their bodies telling them that they're not eating enough food throughout the day. Other people will go into somewhat stress. They think that they need something to help them with it. So they start getting medications, anti-anxieties, antidepressants, okay, because 
they're feeling some kind of way during the day or they feel like they, they can't boost their mood up. If you're not eating enough throughout the day, okay, that's your problem. That's causing the stress in your life. That's causing you to feel non-energetic. That's causing you to, to not be able to cope with certain situations and stresses, making you think that you need to depend on medication in order to boost your mood back up. Best way to do that, stop doing this, okay? But the worst of all, sometimes people, they're, they're not even, you know, eating the nuts throughout the day, okay? Or the fruit. They might be eating takeout, maybe about midday, or they're eating a small meal, something like, uh, let me tell you, Lean Cuisine, Weight Watchers, not dropping any bad thing about them. They're just too small of a portion for you, okay? But if that's all you're doing, okay, sometimes people, they're not even eating during the day. They might wait till the end of the day to eat. Why is that bad? Well, because you're only eating one meal a day. You know who else eats that way? Skips breakfast, you know. Also, they, they work out on empty stomachs. A majority of the people that I speak to, if they're eating like this, or they're only eating one meal a day and they start a fitness program, okay, do you know who else eats like this? In order to, you know, there is a program out there where people do eat like that. You know what that program's called? Sumo wrestler diet. Sumo wrestlers, number one, will skip breakfast because they know that it will slow down weight loss. It will actually stop it. Their metabolism shuts off. Two, sumo wrestlers eat out as frequent as they can every day because they know that they don't know what's going into their foods, but they're liable to consume 33% more food because you got more fats, more impurities in foods, and it's inclusive increasing the amount of calories we're taking into their bodies, okay? They also will consume soft drinks and or alcoholic beverages throughout the day because it's empty calories. Helps them put on more and more weight, okay? Not to mention they'll also work out on empty stomachs because they'll burn far less calories when they do that, okay? So they also will go to sleep after their largest meals because the body won't burn everything and break everything down. It'll store a majority of what they're taking in. Okay? When's the largest meal of our day? Dinner. And when do we go to sleep? Somewhere right around in here, right? You would be shocked that a majority of the people that I speak to eat just like sumo wrestlers. And they don't even realize it. That's a survival mechanism. When your body retains body fat, it's going into survival mode. It's storing it because it doesn't know when you're going to eat again. Okay? How do we correct this? Okay? I had a dry eraser in here, but I don't know what happened to it. But anyways, step one, okay? Women eat less food than men do, okay? Men, we eat two times the amount of food that women do, okay? It's just pure science, genetics. Men, we have a lot more testosterone than women. We have more muscle. We're supposed to eat more food, okay? When a husband and wife goes on a fitness program together and they go to a restaurant and they're sharing food, Somebody's not eating enough food, and that's typically how it turns out, okay? That's not what you're supposed to do, all right? So I'm going to show you an easier, surefire method to approach your fitness and health program from food, okay? First off, you burn calories when you digest a meal. So if you only take in one meal a day, how many calories are you, are you burning, okay? How many? Well, maybe a little bit during that. Let's say we take in another meal a few hours later. We're burning calories then, again. Right? Okay? Yes, that, that's exactly. We, when we digest, we burn calories. Okay? Every time you eat a meal, you're going to be burning calories. Alright? So let's eat another meal that day. Now you're burning some more calories. Okay? Because your body's having to break this down. Now you're conditioning your digestive system. But it can't be just a once every now and then thing. 
Okay, if you haven't been doing this, you have to condition your, your insides, your intestines, your digestive system, just like you would condition your body. It doesn't happen overnight, okay? So in the first couple of days, you might feel like you're eating a lot of food, but really what you're doing is you're finally feeding your body food. What about a fourth meal? If any of you have ever been through this sort of program, you'll notice that by the end of the day, you're starting to get hungry before it's time to eat because your body is burning these calories, but it's going to keep burning it because it's taking in this nutrients. People got it in their heads that the more food you eat, the more weight you're going to, you're going to gain. Yeah, if you eat high calorie meals, like those, remember those little meals that I talked about before? Let me show you a chart, okay? Let's look at these circles right here. Let me give you an example of proteins and carbohydrates, okay? Complex carbohydrates. Let's take this circle right here to be chicken breast, fresh chicken breast, okay? This big circle right here, we're going to say baked potato. Everybody's afraid of white vegetables, white carbohydrates. Oh, don't eat that. That's a carb. That's a carb. But check this out. Your brain and your body needs carbs. Your body also needs carbs in order to burn fat. It also needs carbohydrates for energy. It stores in your muscle and liver. It's called glycogen, okay? You need carbs, all right? So, but do you have to completely cut carbs out of your diet and lose weight? No, absolutely you do not. But there is a certain amount of carbohydrates you can take in with proteins that you can still feel great energy from and burn fat, lose weight, look great, and feel great, okay? So these types of foods, fresh, complex carbohydrates and proteins, okay? These are low calorie foods. And I want you to pay close attention to the size of the circle. There are a higher abundance of food. They're also filled with nutrients, okay? Filled with nutrients all the way to the brim. Something that the body will use as energy and take in, okay? Now look at, look at these little circles right here, okay? We'll take this as fast foods, processed foods, little yogurts, handfuls of nuts, okay? You know, uh, trail mixes, things like fruits, okay, that, that, that have a lot of sugar or sometimes just high preservatives. All right, little snacks like cheese dabs and crackers and, you know, little, little cuisines, miniature cuisine meals or box dinners that you buy at the store, you know, things that you would get <coughs> that are just high calorie, okay, but low nutrient value. Okay, now let's look at the amount of calories that you would burn from these two meals, okay? The body's not going to use the leftovers, it's going to store this, okay? But see, you're going to eat these small calorie little meals and hope that you're going to lose weight, but the body's going to store that because it doesn't know when you're going to eat again. But you're also not eating enough food. So take these higher abundant, low calorie, Full nutrient rich foods like chicken and baked toast, for example. There's other foods you can eat out there, and I'm going to tell you right now the truth. I've watched people lose 5 to 15 pounds in the first two weeks. Okay, I've seen an excess of 20 to 25 pounds for women in six to eight weeks. I've also seen 30 to 35 pounds for men in the same amount of time. The longer you diet, the more weight they lose, okay? And they're eating these foods proteins and carbohydrates, okay? Yeah, we're, I'm showing them a better way to prepare them. They're not putting a bunch of sugar and things in it like that, but they're just they're pacing their cells throughout the day. They're eating a certain amount of portions, and I'm going to share that portion size with you. It's a very simple portion you can take with you, and you can start this off, okay? But the amount of calories that you burn from these meals, okay, throughout the day is a higher amount of calories, and then the body is taking in so much food, okay, it's saying, hey, I don't need this body fat anymore. I need to get rid of it. I'm eating enough food. But it's also burning calories all day long with the multiple meals. Let's add a fifth meal. You think you're going to gain weight from that? Absolutely not. What you're going to do is you're going to increase your body's ability to burn more calories. It's taking on another workout. So when you miss a meal, it's like missing a workout. So now you're, you're, you're eating all day long. You're burning calories from the food that you're taking. You've got a, an energy surplus because you're flooding your body with all these nutrients. And you're flooding it with foods. It's constantly breaking these foods down. So your, your metabolism is skyrocketing. Usually in the first couple of weeks, you're going to notice this change. You're also going to start sleeping better at night because your body is not under stress anymore. It's finally getting enough food. 
No, you're not going to gain weight. You're going to gain weight from this because the body's not storing fat anymore because it's getting enough food. Okay? Taking this potatoes and chicken, white rice, brown rice, sweet potatoes, pastas, you know, uh, some porks, eggs, uh, fishes, everything. Good, wholesome, nutrient-rich foods. Most people walk into a grocery store that pass right by the produce section and they say, well, I can't afford to eat healthy. Yes, you can. For your money, you get a a more amount of food for your buck and you prepare it, you cook it, if you go out for lunch, you spend money doing that and you buy, yes, you're probably going to spend a lot of money doing that, but don't. People are getting away from cooking their own food. Start cooking your own foods. If you don't know how, get on Google, get on YouTube. There's so many instructional videos on how to prepare foods from a healthier standpoint. Basically just stay away from sugar, okay, prepare your own sauces. Don't buy product that has sauce, sugars, and stuff in it already. Okay, there's a lot of sugar-free product out there. There's a lot of low-sodium product out there. Do your research. Shop. Investigate. Learn. Read labels. But if you shop where the fresh meats are and the fresh vegetables, you're at a better chance of staying on a healthier lifestyle. Okay? Now let me show you something else. Once you start eating these meals throughout the day, this is what I want you to take with you as far as portion size. Females, and males, the number four and the number eight, there's your portion size. Go to the store, get a food scale. These are cooked measurements, okay? Wait a minute, I want you to remember everything four. Let's, let's, let's be a little bit reasonable. Let's do three to four, men seven to eight, okay? I'll even make it easier. Some of you males, you know, I'll take into consideration height, you know, 5'5, five, 5'6, five, five, on up to, you know, 6 foot and plus, okay? Every, every item from this point moving forward should weigh at least 4 for females, 3 to 4. We're talking protein and your carbohydrate. If you're consuming a protein such as chicken breast, Four ounces, three to four, okay? Start with four meals a day. Four meals a day for both of you. Men, six to eight. Your protein and your carbohydrates, so you need a protein and a carbohydrate with every meal. Six to eight ounces. I would start high. Start high, four and eight. If that's still too much food for you, you're still having trouble, at least in the first week. You know, if you're still having trouble putting down four meals where your protein weighs about four ounces and your carbohydrate weighs about four ounces, so four ounce baked potato, four ounce chicken breast, four ounce sweet potato, four ounce beef. Beef, I'd probably cut back that twice a week. Look for your leaner cuts. But yes, you can have red meat and still lose weight, but not too much. About two times a week is about the just. You can do fresh pork tenderloins. You can do fishes of any kind. Just stay away from tuna fish that are in cans with high sodium amounts. I would go for fresh product. You can do white rice, four. Four ounces and measuring cup, okay? That's, that's four ounces measuring cup, very instant. Eggs, four, okay? You don't have to eat all the yolks. You can remove yolk from two. Men, eight. Eight ounce chicken, eight ounce beef, eight ounce pork tenderloin. 8 ounces of fish, okay? 8 ounce baked potato, 8 ounce sweet potato, 8 ounces measuring cup white or brown rice, any rice, okay? 8 eggs, yes, 8 eggs. You can remove the yolk to cut down on the portion size. You don't need all that fat, okay? Green vegetables are free foods. You don't have to eat them with the meals, but you can put them in there. They are free foods. They are fast carbs. They, they go through your system extremely fast. Your body, they got extra amounts of protein in them. You can eat them if you want. Okay? Four meals. All right? If you start getting hungry at nighttime and you start getting sugar cravings, usually after the first week or two, for males it might happen after about two or three weeks. Females, it might take a few more weeks than that. But if you start getting sugar cravings, every three to four hours is when you eat. But if you start getting sugar cravings at the end of the day, add another meal. Late at night, you don't need a carb. 
Okay, you can do a green only with your protein. Every meal, hands down, carbohydrate and a protein. Okay, not one or the other, each. You need proteins from the amino acids that are released in your body to build muscles, to help sustain bone densities, to help sustain muscle while you work out in the gym. Okay, if you follow these concepts, okay, along the way, if you have trouble finishing the entire meal of eight and eight, you know, go to six, you know, start off with seven and seven. If that's still too much food, you can drop it down to as much as seven and six or six and six for males. Women, you can drop it down to four, three ounces if you need to. Three ounce chicken, three ounce baked potato. But women, I promise you, you're going to get to a point where you're hungry before that three hours is up. No more than four hours. Men and women, you eat every three to four hours. You start within one hour of wake up. Within one hour of wake up, you start eating. You meal prep. If you can prepare breakfast, there's certain items out there you can do within five minutes out there. I can make a, two meals within five minutes for breakfast, okay? But I am meal prepping. I meal prep on Sundays, I meal prep on Thursdays. Some of my friends, some of my clients, they meal prep on Sundays for the whole week. Find a day where you got a couple of hours where you can prepare some meals for the next few days or for the week. Weigh it. Don't guess. Always weigh it. Weigh it exactly the way that I pointed out. And I promise you, you will see success. If along the way, you're going to start getting hungry, that's where you add the fifth meal, you drop the card for meal five. Okay, if the weight slows down, Make sure that you are increasing your intensity level at the gym periodically, okay? Also, if it does slow down, you can start lowering some of the carbohydrates. Not completely taking them out. Don't listen to what Bobby, Susie, and Tony tell you in the corner of the room who are also overweight, okay? Listen to me or don't take advice unless you know for a fact this person is a health and fitness expert, okay? Just drop a couple of ounces off the carbs. You know, that's all you got to do. Maybe not all of them, maybe one. Play with it. Toy with your body. Just shave it. Find some way to track your food. You need to track your food. There's so many applications out there that you can do. Android users, I would advise you to use Samsung Health. I love Samsung Health. It locates everything. It's connected to Google. I can put whatever food item I want in there, and it's going to locate it. It even knows the store that it's at. I can put product in there. It's got the exact nutritional value that I need so I can track it. It's got an ability to tell me how many carbs, how much protein, how much fats I'm getting that day so I can stay on track. I track it every day so I know how much calories I need to take in that day and how much calories I got left before I get to the end of where I need to be. Okay? Find out what your calorie intake is. If you comment, okay, by the way, like and subscribe to my channel. I'd love to give advice. I've been doing this for about 20 years. I've been training clients and training trainers for about 14 years. This is something I enjoy to do. Guys, i got degrees, i got certifications. I can tell you what they are, but most people don't know what they are. But like and subscribe to my channel. If you have a question, please comment below. I love answering questions, okay? Guys, start right away. Not next week, not January, now, okay? Start learning how your body responds to food. Start eating to live not to survive. A majority of the people are eating to survive. Okay, Guys, thanks for tuning in. Michael Cherokee here, your preventive specialist. I'll talk to you real soon.